This video is sponsored by Surfshark. The Apple Watch Ultra is now well and truly part of my everyday life and plays a very important part in how I monitor my health, track my exercise, and even how I improve my sleep. But I've had some problems with it. It hasn't really been smooth sailing, you know? And if you're an athlete or someone who has a high demand for high precision health tracking data, I have some interesting thoughts for you as well. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech videos. In this video, quite a packed video as well with lots of goodies for you. I'll share my experience in these last six, seven months with all the great things that I love about the Watch Ultra, some of the best accessories that I discovered for it, whether you're looking for budget alternatives or premium ones. I'll also share some of the Watch OS apps that have been incredible on this watch since I bought it. There are some absolute gems that I found here. But I'm also going to share some of the issues I've had with it, including the battery issues. And being someone with a lot of Android devices, including my S23 Ultra here, which is my main phone, there's definitely been some trade-offs as well that I've had to put up with. You know, it's not ideal to have a mixed ecosystem with the Apple Watch Ultra, but I'll cover that later in the video. Lots to talk about. For a little bit of context though, I'm just a regular dad, right? I don't climb mountains or run marathons. My exercise routine is all over the place, but I'm a very busy person. I do a bit of running on the side, but nothing crazy. And talking about running, I run a couple of businesses as well. And I'm also a football coach or soccer if you're in America, which keeps me busy at least twice a week running around and you know, the usual dad things. Like dog walks, your standard commute stuff and also kind of driving my son around to all his sports events around the country. And I'm telling you all of this because it's gonna be important for later when I talk about battery life. Now let's talk about usability of this watch. I think that's one of the most important things, right? How good is this watch on a day-to-day -day basis? I was very nervous buying this watch, right? Like pretty much anyone spending that much money. Apple didn't really target this watch at people like me, right? I'm fully aware of that. Or maybe did they? You know, Personally, I'm more and more convinced that they used a reverse psychology approach there. I don't know if you remember the Apple Watch event and the ads for this watch, right? It's all about extreme sports and scuba diving and survival mode and some remote mountain. All of this makes you think, oh, well, that's, that's not for me, right? At least, <laughs> at least that was the case for me. My dog walks can be treacherous, but nothing that bad, really. But it also had the effect on me of, you know, who do they think they are, you know, telling me what to do. If I want to get this watch and sit on my couch all day, that's what I'm going to do. Ultimately, like in a casino, you know, the house always wins, in this case, Apple. But that nervousness, that apprehension that I had, you know, it's a lot of money to invest in a watch, all kind of went away when I actually used it. I'm a firm believer that until you try the product yourself and you experienced it in your know, day to day, there really is no marketing or reviews that will truly represent what's important to you. I'm sure these reviews help, but until you've touched it and felt it yourself right, and used it yourself, these are just guidelines, right? And this was very true for me. Everyone else on YouTube just kept saying how big this watch was and how awkward it felt. I don't have large wrists at all. My, I kind of think I'm just about on the medium size at about 19 centimeters. Sure, it felt a little bit weird at first, especially, you know, I was coming from a Series 5, which is a much smaller watch, right? But, but if you're used to bigger watches, like the Garmin stuff, for example, then this is actually quite discreet in comparison. I'm not suggesting we're replacing Garmin's with this, by the way. And before we talk about the display in a little bit more detail, I want to give you a moment here to appreciate this beautiful design and also to see how it's holding up after seven months. I don't get tired of how good this watch looks, you know? For me, what made this watch so much better than the previous Apple watches was the display. Not just the beautiful sapphire crystal display here, which clearly has done its job really well. There's no scratches at all on the watch, but because the apps on the watch are now so much easier to use for me. I still can't type on it. Um, I tried, <laughs> tried different apps and things like that, but at least it's doable. But I did find using apps like Spotify, Apple Music, 1Password, and many others, just a much more enjoyable because of the Apple Watch Ultra's bigger display. Now, if you're more interested in exercise tracking apps, the Apple Fitness sort of built-in apps are of course A-OK, -okay, and I sign up to Apple Fitness Plus or whatever, but for me, even for me, where I'm not that active, I find them a bit lacking sometimes in terms of data and how that data is then used to display to you, you know, what's important. And this is where Garmin users may feel that this is not the watch for them, right? Because that provides you so much more information. But I did find some great third-party apps out there that will give you more than what Apple does. For instance, you know, having a visual map integrated with your running or showing you your exertion and recovery data that 
Apple really, you know, you have to dig deep in the Apple system to find out. Let's not get ahead of ourselves though. I'm definitely not saying that the watch ultra replaces the Garmin at all. There are pros and cons, but if you're a Garmin type of person, you know why you're a Garmin type of person. You know, I'm not even going to argue with you because there's just so much more you can do on those. Plus, battery life. I do love some of Apple's improvements that they've done on the Fitness Plus stuff, but the workout app for me is still too basic in my opinion. The apps themselves have changed very little, but the usability is that much improved on this display that I actually feel like going to the app on the watch instead of the iPhone sometimes. I got rid of my iPhone 14 Pro Max and replaced it with a 13 mini, which is another story. But in short, the only reason I have an iPhone at all is because of the Watch Ultra, you know. This is the product that actually is keeping me in the Apple ecosystem. That's crazy to think, right? That's, that's a watch. I was able to switch from the 14 Pro Max to the S23 Ultra, but losing the Watch Ultra was just a bridge too far for me, right? So the 13 mini is a bit of a compromise. I'll discuss that in a separate video. I'm not getting all my notifications as I used to because my main SIM card is now on a Samsung device, but everything else is fine because of the 13 mini. When it comes to the ergonomics of this watch, right, it takes time with some products right, for you to get used to it and let them bed in. I don't know, for me, it was almost like, you know, immediately. So I was so quickly used to it. And within days, I was even kind of sleeping with it on and using it to track my sleep without issues. And that should tell you pretty much everything you need to know when it comes to how comfortable this is for some people. It's just very light. And depending on the strap that you're using, it's, it's really comfortable. On the other hand, I found that the orange action button on the side here, every now and then is a bit kind of trigger happy for me, right? Depending on the clothing that I'm wearing or you know what I'm doing, I find it that more often than not, this button is getting pressed accidentally. I have mine set to start a workout and I think that's pretty much what everyone else is doing. And there's been more than a few occasions where you know I started a workout without knowing and only noticed it like a couple of hours later. And this is where I think Apple could help us, right? Because in a few occasions, this happened when I was driving. So clearly not exercising. You know, why can't Apple's amazing AI uh, introduce a little bit of a haptic to say, hey, are you definitely working out here? Because, you know, it looks like you're driving. <laughs> if we can see your iPhone is connected to your car's Bluetooth, right? It's like, hey, hello, you're not exercising. Anyway, maybe it's just me, I don't know. Let me know if you get those accidental button pushes as well. Even when we come down to the coast here, you know, I've been playing football earlier, there's absolutely no sand stuck with it. Didn't get sweaty at all. It's really, really comfortable, even for playing sports. Awesome to see, despite the size of this device, how comfortable it is, right? And talking about comfortable stuff, I have a gift for you. But before we talk about that, look, I tried quite a few of these Apple Watch straps, right? I've got a couple here to show you. But I landed on these two being my favorites. Well, this one is Apple's own trail loop, which is by far the most comfortable to wear in bed. And this here that I'm wearing right now is the Titanium Edition by Sunmark. This one is more of a premium option, but man, it's been a revelation for me, right? I've used so many metal bands before, you know, with my previous watches as well. And some look really nice, but end up being quite sharp on the edges or too heavy, you know, pull your hair and stuff like that. This for me is just perfect. Feels very light, it looks, great right it's identical finish to the uh, apple watch ultra it looks like it belongs to it right sure it's a bit on the expensive side but 100 percent the best accessory i found so far i have all the links for you in the description now here's the gift for you i actually pre-ordered this one months ago and then sunmark contacted me and said hey do you want to try this one and i was like oh i've already got one but yeah sure so they sent me this and I'm gonna give this to one of you. So don't worry, I will pay for shipping. So with your comment below, just add the diamond emoji and I will select one of you randomly to get this. To be clear, you don't need to be subscribed to the channel, but it would be awesome if you were, right? And if you share this video with somebody, you get two chances to win. I, I did try other accessories as well, like a screen protector and other straps from Amazon. And I was actually shocked at how good some of those were. I mean, this is one of them here for a fraction of the price, right? And you get some really better colorways as well. For example, this one from Amazon is $16 versus $100 from Apple, right? So I can't tell the difference. They feel the same, they weigh the same. Even the latch, you know, the latch is actually a slightly different color, but almost identical material and quality. Right, probably too soon to talk about what I'd like to see in future, but here are my thoughts anyway. What I really love to see, and I'm pretty sure based on my comments that a lot of you would like to see that as well, is for this design to kind of pass on to the Series 9 and kind of the smaller watches as well. So I'm pretty sure that a lot of people will pay a little bit extra just to have this display on the Series 9 or, you know, some, some sort of 
um, mini ultra, <laughs> whatever, kind of a smaller version of the ultra. This Sapphire crystal display is no joke. After seven months, you can see, and I'm bumping it all the time, you know, kind of really clumsy. And I do believe that the battery life, despite a lot of people saying that they're, they're okay with theirs, mine is not really consistent. You know, I've had all sorts of issues. 9.2 was fine, 9.3 improved it. But then after a couple of weeks, it got bad again. And I'm saying, when I say bad, it means, you know, less than two days battery life. And, you know, I'm not really that active for it to not last over two days. It's pretty bad, I think. But judging by my comment sections in my last video, I'm not alone. There's quite a few of you out there having exactly the same problems that I am. I think this is the most important point. I like better software. Now we've had this watchOS look and feel since the first Apple Watch, right? So I think it's time for it to have like a proper uplift. Just like iOS itself on the iPhone, you know, I think iPhone is boring now. And the only reason I've got an iPhone, which is this one here, is because of the Watch Ultra. You know, if it wasn't for the watch, I would not have this. I don't think I'm asking for much really, am I? But let me know if you think those improvements are the ones that you'd like to see as well, or if there's anything else that you would prefer to see, or are you okay with it for maybe the next two, three years? This, this will be fine. Right, the biggie one for me, right? As someone who's always so busy, one thing that I really appreciate is battery life. And I have to be honest here, it's just not been great, right? I'm kind of living with it, but it annoys me that a watch this expensive is having such issues. You just would not get that with a Garmin, for example. It started off amazingly well. In my last review, I reported on, on this and not many people kind of agreed with me at first, but now it seems that more and more people are on the same boat. I'm getting more and more comments saying, yeah, I'm having the same problem. I think it's a shame because a part of that inconsistent battery life has been a superb experience, right? Which brings me to the apps that I use on this watch, but not just the regular apps, you know, the best apps that I've found. But before that, just a quick word from today's sponsor, Surfshark. Like the apps I'm about to share with you, Surfshark has been a great app for me, right? Extremely robust, but also very simple to use. Off the bat, my favorite feature is how easy it is to share the subscription across devices. Doesn't matter how many Apple or Android devices you've got in your home, everything is protected the same way. In today's world, where you're protecting your business or your family, you know, if you've got kids, it's super important to have as many protection layers as possible. And Surfshark offers more than one way of protection. There's obviously the VPN aspect, which helps you, you know, when you're accessing a public Wi-Fi, for example, or it could be a hotel or a cafe or a restaurant. You never really know if there's someone monitoring your usage or trying to steal your information when you're using those public Wi-Fi's, you know, credit card details, usernames and passwords. Surfshark VPN puts a mask, if you like, you know, encrypting your connection which means any hackers out there trying to steal your information will have a really hard time snooping on you to find out what you're doing or where you're doing it from. But protecting your privacy is not the only thing that Surfshark can help you with. Another two great ways that Surfshark helps me is when I'm using online shopping, for example, or watching content. I can very easily change my IP address to a different country and look for the best online deals based on that country or I can browse streaming services and watch content that are country specific. Super useful for things like sports, but also for catching up with your favorite series when you travel abroad, right? And the great news for you is with my code, AlexGTech, Surfshark is offering an 83% discount and three months for free. Why is it 83? A bit random, isn't it? Why not 80 or 85? No, you don't know? I totally have a team of people over there. Just use the link in the description with the promo code to get started. And thanks so much Surfshark for sponsoring this video. As I mentioned earlier, I've tried many apps for the Apple Watch Ultra and outside the obvious ones, here's some of the apps that really stood out for me, really made a big difference to my day to day. The first one is actually a very simple one, but very important is 1Password. It actually saves the most time for me every day, right? I'm not being sponsored by them in this video. It's just an app that I've been using for about five years now, and I'm glad the integration with the Apple Watch Ultra works beautifully. It's awesome on the desktop and on the mobile, and has a lot more features on those, but I love what it gives me on the watch, which is convenience. I don't save every single password on this, but all the ones that I use the most are saved on the watch, and I love that. It's not mind blowing or anything like that, but I just love the simplicity. Again, the bigger display is better for, for this app as well. Sometimes it's the little things in life, you know, like not having to remember your passwords. And going back to exercise, luckily there are third party apps that I think are better than what Apple offers. And I found this amazing one, which is called Athletic. No, I haven't developed a Kiwi accent all of a sudden. It's actually unfair to say that this is just an exercise app because you know they have so many cool features here. It does require a subscription off the bat, so I'm not gonna you know, ignore that. If you wanna use some of the pro features, which I think are definitely worth it, especially if you're after something that will give you a bit more of a you know, detailed breakdown of your health, your HRV, 
exertion, recovery score, all of those things. And you know, you can see then on the watch, if you're ready to train or you should be resting or not. It sounds obvious, but the more you use the app, the more information you give it, the better you'll become, right? Like your sleep patterns, your breathing, all the stuff that you do on the watch or you can do on your phone, if you let that data integrate within the app. Honestly, I just found it much easier than Apple's built-in fitness app that either omits the information completely or makes it really hard for you to extract any meaning from it. Now, there's two caveats here, if you like. One, I think using apps like this means there's a lot more readings being done by the watch, right? Which could potentially be causing my battery issues. Though I haven't really been able to prove that because there's been weeks and weeks where the battery was fine. An example of this is AF history, a fibrillation, I think it's called. I don't think that's on by default. It's only recommended if you've been diagnosed with AF before, by the way. So I'm tired AF, but I don't think that's the same thing. The other caveat is more of a realistic one, right? Do I need a watch or an app to tell me that I'm tired or I need exercise? No, but having the data really changes how I approach things. Seeing the information presented in such a beautiful, such a useful way for me is golden. It's just annoying that Apple themselves are not including these features, especially you know when you pay for Fitness Plus. I think that should be included. Another great app you should check out is Work Outdoors. I have this on my watch and I've used it a long time ago, but as I shared in my previous video, I've been so happy with Athletic that I don't use Work Outdoors anymore. The great thing about Work Outdoors is the map though. And this is where Garmin users may be tempted to try this. You know, the map on this is just, is amazing. Each and every element of the screen is customizable. You can even download the map for offline use as well. Really is a fantastic little app. Oh, I nearly forgot. Before I talk about another favorite app of mine, probably the most favorite, is that a thing, the most favorite? Anyway, just a quick reminder that this YouTube business is super hard. So if you're enjoying this video, a thumbs up will go a long way. I really mean this, it really helps the channel. Well, it helps me getting the channel discovered out there. And I'm not gonna ask you to subscribe for no reason, but please, after this video, take a look around the channel. And if you do like my stuff, it would be awesome if you subscribed. What do you get with that? Well, I'm here at least once a week with a new down to earth tech video for you. As I was saying, another favorite app of mine has been Sleep Cycle. I cannot, tell you how happy I am with this app on this watch. I've had this app on my smartphones for many years and having this on my watch is super valuable for me. I really think this is actually an opportunity missed by Apple. Ergonomically speaking, this watch actually feels great to sleep with it on. For me, it's been between four and five days a week, so I sleep with it on fairly frequently. I know we do get some sleep tracking data from Apple now, but in my experience, it's been pretty iffy. I've heard lots of other people as well complain that sometimes they wake up in the middle of the night and the watch doesn't even register it. Sleep cycle feels really accurate to me, and this is gonna sound really silly, right? The best feature for me is actually the alarm. You know, it's, it's such a simple thing, but makes a world of difference to me. The way I wake up pretty much dictates my mood and the way I feel for the rest of the day. I fully expect that you may have a completely different approach to sleep. This is probably one of the most personal things that we have, but it made a massive difference for me. You know, it's sometimes counterintuitive because it will, it will basically wake you up before the alarm that you set. It will never wake you up after the time because that will be very silly and annoying, but I love how it chooses the right sleep cycle to wake you up, even if that means technically getting less sleep. For me, game changer. I did a separate video as well about the best apps for the Watch Ultra. So I won't go into a lot of detail here in this video, but I encourage you to take a look at that one because some of the apps now have really been brought to life with this beautiful display, right? And is one of the most popular videos on this channel, like ever. I'd love to see Apple expand on this design and maybe bring this look and feel to the next Apple Watch series. But what I really, really love to see is if Apple could allow some sort of Android app to interact with the watch. But that's a massive stretch, I know. See you soon. How it goes, looking back, what a messed up time.